Good afternoon, everybody. This is Alec with Home and Rehab, and I just read a really interesting research article literally yesterday that I wanted to go over today because it presents with some very, very important findings that we want to talk about when we're regarding things about uh, something that we normally consider relatively benign, and that is over-the-counter pain medications, things like ibuprofen, Tylenol, aspirin. So, what the article was talking about was a massive thing called a systematic review. Now, systematic reviews are an extremely important aspect of research. What it does is it takes various different experiments and synthesizes what all those findings put together so we get an overall meaning. Now, just doing one experiment on something doesn't always carry all the meaning we'd like. So we want to be able to reproduce it, try putting it in different, slightly different circumstances and make sure that all the variables we think are impacting it put together the way we think they are. And so what this one did was it looked at the overall effects on healing with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication, something you might have seen as NSAIDs. NSAIDs are usually considered a relatively benign medication to take in regards to pain control, and they're often given um, because they have a far less severe side effects than some of our more aggressive uh, pain control methods like opioids. However, they do also present with some of their own side effects that people are usually relatively aware of. About every 1,000 pills taken of ibuprofen, for example, can drastically increase your rate of liver failure. And so we tend to recommend that people don't take any NSAIDs that are processed by the liver for long periods of time. However, because not everybody knows this, doctors aren't always able to track how many of these pills people are taking because, of course, they're easily available over the counter. What this review wanted to take a look at is because we tend to use NSAIDs as our own when we're in the home, our first response to pain, they want to see does that affect healing rates. Now the reason they looked at this is relatively straightforward. When we are injured, our body is automatically going to become slightly inflamed. That inflammatory process is actually beneficial, and we talked about this in a previous video. When we are inflamed, it's actually bringing nutrients to the area, bringing certain cells that both break down the bad tissue and help build up new good tissue. And this can be extremely important in our healing process to have a certain amount of inflammation. So the theory was, all right, well, if I'm taking too many NSAIDs and I'm anti-inflammatory, I might actually be slowing my healing process down. And so what they did was they did an experiment on a couple different types of NSAIDs. So what they're looking at is different mechanisms in which the NSAIDs are blocking different inflammatory processes. What they found was non-specific NSAIDs. These are NSAIDs like ibuprofen, um, and naproxen, things that are just kind of a general blanket NSAID, actually usually has no long-term effects. However, there's a specific um, type of block that can be put on that can actually cause some problems. And so, because I don't have all this memorized, biochemistry was not my focus, I want to pull it up. And of course I actually do keep these at my desk side because I'm boring like that. So, there's something called uh, nonspecific uh, COX inhibitors and COX-2 inhibitors. What we found is that COX-2 inhibitors actually do seem to slow our process down. When we look at this research, we actually found that there were some relatively dramatic effects. Now, the reason that um, they were looking at COX-2 inhibitors in the first place is some of the other side effects um, uh, actually seem to decrease. So what they talk about is that here, COX-2 selective inhibitors actually have less gastrointestinal side effects. So some of our stomach issues common with some of our more drastic uh, NSAIDs can be eliminated, although they do sometimes increase the risk of things called thrombosis and heart attack, which again, not something that is exactly ideal. However, more importantly, what they found was that these COX-2 selective NSAIDs actually create greater risk for impaired healing and injury. So what they were finding is that when we use that specific type of medication after a rotator cuff repair or after a patellar tendon repair, they actually had greater risk of failure of that graft. What they found was that the tendons were actually weakened by this lack of inflammatory process, and it actually seemed to inhibit the ability of the body to heal. Now this is a huge finding because that seems to be our go-to whenever we have a sprain or strain. When we're treating it ourselves, we just tend to grab an NSAID. But if this is actually not the best case for us, it might mean that we need to reevaluate what our over-the-counter go-to is. And we might want to control our inflammation in a little bit less drastic process. So certain things like kinesio tape or compression sleeves, the lighter ones that would tend to look more like Under Armour, seem to provide a good inflammatory control without eliminating it. And this may be a better solution for people as opposed to just popping medication. The other reason that this can be important is that your body's pain exists for a reason and taking pain control medication may limit our body's perception of what it's doing. So, one of the reasons that I do have pain with a tendonitis is my tendon is trying to tell me I'm overloading it, I'm putting too much strain through it, and I need to back off. If I just mask that pain with medication, 
I could actually be not only slowing down my healing process, but risking more damage because now I don't have that message from my body that tells me to slow down and stop. So this doesn't mean that we should not be taking pain medication or that we shouldn't be using NSAIDs, but it does mean that we need to analyze how we're doing this, why, when, and how often, because it seems there is a little bit more to it than we initially thought. So that doesn't mean, of course, don't go buy an ibuprofen and don't take one when you need it. However, it does mean that you might want to have a more specific uh, conversation with your doctor about this study and make sure that the ones you're taking are the correct ones and that the dosages you're taking them at are not long term and they're not too high. If you guys have other questions about things like this or anything else rehab related, please drop us a message or uh, comment down below so that we know what you guys want to learn about. You have a great week and we'll see you soon.